Puppet Warp is a really powerful tool for changing the shape of different parts of your images. And this is how it works. We begin by making a cutout of an area of the image, like the giraffe here. So we can use any selection tool to make a cutout. We could, for example, use the quick selection tool here and just make a selection of our giraffe's heads here. And I'm just trying to isolate them against the sky. I don't need to worry about the bottom half of the frame here. And then once we've got a decent selection of the area we want to isolate, we can hit Command or Control and J, that's Command J on a Mac, Control J on a PC to copy that selected area to a new layer. And then we can start warping it. Now, it's best to convert the layer here to a smart object before we go into Puppet Warp because that will keep the warp controls non-destructive, which means we can always go back in and adjust them at any point. So we can right click that cutout layer and choose Convert to Smart Object. Then we can go to Edit, Puppet, Warp. Now you'll see a mesh over your image. You can turn this mesh off and on by checking and unchecking the box here. And the first thing we're gonna to want to do is to add pins over parts of our image that we want to anchor in place. So I want to anchor the bottom half of the frame here because I don't want that area to move at all. So I'm just gonna click a few pins across it like this to add them to the mesh and then I'll maybe perhaps click a couple of pins on the bodies here of each giraffe and then we can start adjusting areas. Now, if I click on the head here and then drag that pin around, notice we can change the shape of our layer here. So you can see how easy it is to make dramatic changes to the shape of your subject. Now, another way to adjust parts of the shape is to rotate them. We could perhaps click a pin at the base of this giraffe's neck here, and then we can use the rotate options here to change the rotation. Perhaps we'll go for 30 degrees there, and notice how that changes the angle of the neck. An easier way to do it, rather than inputting figures up here, is to hold Alt and hover outside of that pin there, and notice that brings up a little circle, and then we can drag the circle to change it like this. Now there are also a couple of useful options up here in the options bar at the top. First of all, we can set a mode here. And most of the time, normal is probably the mode that you're going to want to be using because that behaves in a way that's easiest to anticipate. But we could also perhaps choose rigid, which just gives a slightly more rigid result where the effect can be a bit more angular. And then there's also distort. And distort works by enlarging the size of the shape as you drag further away. So you can see as I'm dragging that pin further away, the giraffe's head is actually getting bigger. If I drag back towards, you can see it gets smaller. So this can be quite useful if you're trying to correct things like lens distortion. But I think for our purposes here, normal is gonna be fine. Now we can also choose to set a density setting and this changes the appearance of the mesh. If we go for fewer points, then notice our mesh gets slightly less complex. If we go for more points, notice the gaps get smaller. And this just changes the amount of time it takes for the command to process information. So again, normal works fine for most circumstances, but if you want a finer degree of control, you might want to choose more points. And if you find things are going really slowly, you might want to choose fewer points to speed things up. Next to this is expansion, and this just lets you expand or contract the area outside of the edge here. So you can see if we bring that up to a higher value, how that affects the image, and you can see the mesh gets wider and wider. So in this case, we'll keep it fairly low. And finally, we can set a pin depth here, and this becomes useful when we have parts of an image that overlap. So for example, if we just drag this giraffe's head over here and then move the other one over there like that, then we might want this head here and the neck to sit behind the other one, in which case we can just highlight that pin there and then click the pin backward button here and notice how now the other neck sits in front. In fact, it's easier to see if we turn the mesh off. If we bring that pin upwards, you see it goes in front, send it backwards and it sits behind. So that's quite useful if parts of your mesh overlap. And that's really all there is to it. Let's perhaps just bring our giraffe heads back to a more natural position here. And then we can click the tip to apply. And notice because we applied the effect to a smart object layer, we can always just double click to go back into the settings at any time and readjust things until we're happy.